Welcome back to Deb's Big Backyard. I'm Deb. Gardening for wildlife, specifically birds, in an urban backyard is fun, fruitful, and sustainable year-round. Especially when you have feeders and specific seed to attract in species that are in your neighborhood already. Very soon, Eric Gyllenhaal, a veteran birder and naturalist, is going to drop by to show me how I can make my backyard bird experience even better. Thanks, Eric, so much for coming into my wildlife habitat here. I've spent a year building up an opportunity for birds to come in during the summer, fall, well, of course, spring, and now in the winter. So I was hoping you could take a look at it. Well, it looks really great. Uh, you've got the feeders uh, with the most popular seeds. It'll bring in the coolest yeah. birds, like the sunflower in one feeder, the safflower here for the cardinals and things like that, uh, thistle great for goldfinches. Uh, I also see up here you've got a suet feeder yes. and some more feeders that bring the birds a little closer to your house. Uh, suet's great for woodpeckers and uh, other birds will eat it too. Uh, you've got uh, the fruit plants you told me about. I see the grapes over there. Uh, raspberries you said. Uh, those are all going to be good foods for birds and they'll be coming ripe uh, in a good season when the things like the robins and the Cedar waxwings have their babies and need to feed them. Mm -hmm. I also see you've got a lot of uh, plants that flower in the fall and then produce seeds. Those are great for the sparrows. Um, another thing I like about, oh, the trumpet creeper on your back fence, that's really cool because that brings in the hummingbirds. Uh, the big orange flowers have got a lot of nectar. Hummingbirds love it. And uh, they're ripe at just the right time when the hummingbirds are starting to migrate uh, in August. Another thing you can do is put out water. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of birds need water. Uh, especially in the wintertime when uh, robins are eating dried up fruit, they'll have to drink water. Morning doves drink water to digest their seeds. Uh, anybody will come into water. So if you have a heated water bowl in your backyard, even if you don't do anything else, the birds will find it. Of course, one of the things I really like about your yard is that, uh, if you'll pardon me saying this, it's a little messy. Uh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, there's dead plants on the ground as well as uh, the live plants and the plants that recently died and had seeds on them. I like the dead leaves along the fence, the dead tree leaves. Uh, bugs will start to eat those and robins will come and eat the bugs. Uh, different kinds of sparrows like fox sparrows will eat the bugs as well. I see the straw. Um, the straw's probably got seeds mixed in with it. I saw juncos in your yard before. Right, and I've, I've had this community of cardinals that seem to have come in in pairs uh -huh. and it seems to be expanding. Is that a good thing? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, in the summertime, cardinals will set up territories, uh, and only the male and his female uh, will be allowed in that territory, uh, and they'll fight around the edges and chase the others off. But in the wintertime, um, uh, when there's a good source of food that they can share, cardinals will, will all come together, uh, and you'll have seven, eight, ten cardinals around, sometimes even more. We've never had house finches before, and we did this year, as well as a, a couple of woodpeckers. Uh huh. Well, actually, both those birds are interesting because I, um, ash trees uh, used to be a source of food for house finches in the wintertime. Ash trees that were, you know, like 50 years old would have thousands and thousands of seeds for the house finches to eat all winter long. Mm -hmm. Ash trees are almost all gone in our neighborhood now, so the house finches, if they're going to survive, have got to find other food sources, and uh, one of them is feeders, and so that may be why you've suddenly got house, finch, house finches at your feeders is because they lost their natural source of food. Well, you know, and also I've always heard the black-capped chickadees and never seen one, and then I put some black oil sunflower seed in a tube feeder, and all of a sudden those black-capped chickadees are going directly to that red feeder with that seed. Does that uh -huh. have something to do with it? Uh, I, think it's, I think it's that seed. They love that seed. Uh, they're probably eating some of it. The other thing you might notice, uh, the chickadees will take seeds and hide them around the neighborhood. They'll stuff them in little corners and garages that are, have got old wood. They'll find tree bark, put them under there. Uh, they might stuff them uh, between the, uh, the loose bricks that you have. They'll, they'll, they'll hide thousands of seeds around your feeder if they keep coming all, all fall and early winter. And then when they need a food source and maybe you forget to put some out, they'll have a backup plan. Well, I haven't gotten any blue jays yet. What's going on with that? Well, the way we bring blue jays to our yard, we put out peanuts in the shell, and you do it in the shell because the house sparrows will eat them if the uh, peanuts have already broken out of the shell, but the blue jays can open the shells, the cardinals can open the shells. Uh, White-breasted nuthatches, which I guess you're not getting, they can open the shells. So you put out peanuts in the shells, you put them on a tray that the squirrels can't reach, the blue jays find them, and they'll be coming. They just love them. I don't have any trees in my backyard, but my neighbors do. Well, that's great, yeah. I mean, I was noticing you've got evergreen trees, uh, 
the front yard trees here in Oak Park, if you've got, uh, uh, well, good things uh, for birds in the, in the rest of the year, uh, especially in the spring, would be elm trees. Uh, honey locusts bring in the warblers uh, in the middle of May. Uh, so when you have a small backyard like this, you depend on your neighbors and uh, the village, the people who, who grow trees on the tree lawns. And why should more people be aware of the birds that are in their neighborhood? I think the biggest reason would be, um, like for you, they can bring joy into your life. Uh, it's something that's always there, it's, it's always been there. Uh, and even if you don't do anything, uh, in a place like Oak Park where we've got all these trees, uh, they're going to be there for years to come. And if you open up to them, if you stop and look and listen, uh, you'll see beautiful things that you never knew existed before. Everybody's talking about the importance of counting birds. Why is it important to count birds in your backyard? Or anywhere, really? Well, um, the world is changing. Um, in Oak Park, things like uh, Elm trees and ash trees are dying and changing uh, the food that's available to birds. Uh, there's uh, climate change based on uh, pollution from carbon dioxide and things like that. Uh, people are planting different plants in their, in their gardens. Uh, some are good for birds and some are not. Uh, the world is changing and we want to know how wildlife is responding to those changes. Uh, there are a certain number of scientists in the world who can uh, go out and gather data and uh, provide some information about that. But if a whole lot more people can go out and start counting birds, we'll have a whole lot more information and can get a lot more fine-grained understanding of how uh, migration is changing, how uh, the kinds of birds you find in your neighborhood are changing, uh, what birds might be dropping in population, which ones are increasing in population. And um, to have enough data to really understand those patterns, we need a whole lot more people counting birds. So I want to get involved right now. What can I do? Well, I think uh, because Backyard Bird Watch is coming up, that's probably the easiest way to get started. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just one weekend, one weekend commitment. Uh, start learning your backyard birds now. Count them the weekend of February 12th through 15th, and you can enter the data online. 15 minutes of counting, I think that's uh, the minimum they ask for, and it takes maybe uh, 20 or 30 minutes to set up an account and enter the data. That's probably the best place to start. Um, if you can't wait to do that, uh, the same people who do Backyard Bird Count also do Project Feeder Watch. And Project Feeder Watch is a little bit more commitment because you do it for a couple days every week. But again, you don't have to do it all day for those two days. You can just do it for a half hour each day and submit your data. And then if you really get into it, then you can get involved with eBird, uh, which is uh, something you can do year round and something you can do anywhere that you go around the world. You can submit your bird counts uh, for eBird. So it's, it's kind of, you know, if you get interested, um, there's always something more you can do. And why did you start? People talk about spark birds, uh, the bird that got got them started with uh, bird watching. And I think maybe mine was a Cooper's hawk. We had a feeder in our backyard and this amazing hawk came swooping down and caught one of the birds and flew away with it. Uh, and I found out what it was and learned that Cooper socks were coming to people's feeders. And that was my start, I think, uh, seeing that Cooper sock. I sort of drifted away from it for a while when I got out of college. But then my kids got interested uh, when they were in uh, second grade and fourth grade. Uh, they got interested in bird watching and uh, it's been going on ever since then, more than 10 years at this point. They're off at college and I'm kind of semi-retired now and I spend a whole lot of time counting birds in the neighborhood. You're empty nesting. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm keeping it full, but not with human babies, but with uh, 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 bird babies instead. I am doing the same. <laughs> that about wraps it up for Deb's Big Backyard on the Road. I'm Deb. I'm Eric. We'll see you next time.